Hi, and welcome to episode number 211 of the Savvy Social Podcast. This is a show dedicated to helping online business owners and entrepreneurs learn how to use social media as a tool to grow your business. I'm your host, Andrea Jones, and I'm fiercely committed to helping you understand both the how and the why of social media marketing so that you can create connection, build community, and make your difference in the world. This podcast is brought to you by Sendable, which is the all-in-one social media management tool that we use at the agency every day. We use it to schedule posts and analyze our results. So try them out for yourself for free by going to onlinedrea.com slash sendable. And you can always find all of our links in this episode at onlinedrea.com slash 211. So anything we talk about today, head to that link, grab it. Uh, I'm super excited to bring on today's guest. I've been like social creeping her for a while. (laughs) And this is a great opportunity to kind of pick her brain about her business and bring that to you and show you an example of what's possible. Before I introduce her, though, I do want to remind you to grab our free course, we free bamped it. It's like nice and pretty inside. And we've got lots of free goodies in there teaching you how to really jumpstart your social media strategy, everything from creating content to growing your accounts. And we have done for you captions, graphics, and more. So check it out at onlinedrea.com slash free. And again, that link is in the show notes. Uh, today's guest is Erica Tebbins, a sales strategist for Rebels who were reject the status quo and desire success, but aren't willing to compromise who they are to get there. She works with service providers, consultants, and coaches to create custom growth plans that avoid complex systems, sleazy sales tactics, and battling burnout. With nearly 20 years of experience running successful businesses, from solo operations to multi-million dollar retail teams, she knows there's no perfect way to operate, only one that's perfectly aligned with your strengths, values, and visions. She's also the host of the weekly Sell It Sister podcast, where she dishes out BS-free business advice. Erica, welcome to the show. Thank you so, so much for having me. I am really thrilled to be here and I love social stalking you as well. I love, (laughs) I love uh, checking out your TikToks and you just, yeah, I've just been a fan for years. So thank you. Oh, thank you. This is the power of social media at work. (laughs) It is, it is. Uh, But I want to kind of give a a start from the beginning. Um, How did you get started as a sales strategist? Like what kicked off your business? Yeah. So what's kind of funny is when I started my current business in 2017, I actually, my focus was going to be on consulting around client experience to help people get more repeat and referral business. And so I was doing my due diligence with some voice of the customer research. And I was talking to friends who I knew who ran businesses. And they were like, yeah, that sounds really cool. But I I can't really hire you for that right now because I'm actually struggling to get consistent clients. So it doesn't really make sense to pay money for that when I really just need to get more people in the door. And so I was thinking about it. And for like the first six months, I felt really, really frustrated because I was like, Oh my gosh, like I just, I can't get this thing off the ground. And then I had this aha moment where I was sort of got curious and I was trying to backtrack like, okay, well, like what's the thing before the thing, right? If, if the thing before the thing is like they need more clients, like what's the thing before that? And I was realizing that the thing that I kept hearing over and over was like, I, I don't know how to sell. Like I'm afraid to sound sleazy or like uh, an infomercial, a used car salesman, like, you know, just all of all of that stuff, right? I don't want to be pushy. I was hearing all of that. And I was like, wait a minute, why do I... I don't struggle with this. Why don't I struggle with this? And I realized I was like, oh, because I am looking at it in this totally different way than a lot of other people do, especially women entrepreneurs. And so I did a pivot at that point about six months in to talking about sleaze-free sales and marketing. And like 
that from that point it just took off and i've i've never i've never looked back so yeah i'm 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 really grateful for the for the journey and and glad that i i finally like hit on what it was and i actually realized that the thing that so many other people struggle with it was actually something that just came very naturally to me yeah i i find especially uh myself as an introvert um the like talking about what you have to offer and going, can I have money for this? Please? <laughs> yeah. Like it feels awkward sometimes. So how do we like, what are, what are some of your framework pieces for how we approach that? You know, especially as introverts and especially in the world of social media where it feels like everyone's selling something. Yeah. Yeah, completely. So I think that for me, it's really like, you know, for all of us, we can all think about, um, like a company or a person that we love buying from or that we we spent money with and we had a great experience and we are constantly referring that person or that business like so i think if we can start with the realization that like as consumers we actually don't hate spending money as long as it feels very aligned right as long as it's like we're getting something that we want we feel like our um, purchase was respected. We feel seen and heard, you know, like all of that. We actually love spending money with people and companies that we feel good spending money with. So if that's true for us in terms of other people, then it can be true for us in terms of people feeling that way about spending money with us. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I think where things tend to go off the rails is because like network marketing, MLM, direct sales, because that's such a huge industry and they far too often don't actually teach like the fundamentals of sales and marketing. They just do what I call like the spray and pray, right? They're like, write a huge list of every person that you know, and just set like, um, send out these copy paste very generic messages, right? We've all been on the receiving end of something like this. And the hope is that like, if you send out enough of them that like, you'll get a ton of no's, but you'll get a few yeses. And why that like, it feels so bad and it feels so demoralizing. And it's so much like energy wasted is because like, and I know, I know, you know, this, cause I know you have like a target market and, and you, you know, you've done all of that for yourself and your company is that it completely ignores the fact that we all have people who are most poised to get the result that we want them to get. So rather than you or I just being out there saying like, hey, literally everyone on planet internet, like by by this thing that I have, we, if we use our, you know, our copy, our content, our marketing, all of that to really think about specific people who would be a best fit, then it's actually not unaligned, right? So then we're, we're really just asking, um, we're really like speaking to the people who can benefit the most and asking them, Hey, do you want to learn more about this way that I could help you solve XYZ problem? Interesting. Yeah, I think, you know, we've all had those messages. I had once, uh, one time someone on LinkedIn tried to sell me solar panels. Um, <laughs> and they were in like one of the M states, Missouri, maybe. And, uh, I live in Canada. I was like, we're not even in the same country. And I, I'm not interested in your solar panels. <laughs> and so yeah. that, that spray and pray feels bad. I think on both ends, like yeah. as the person doing it and as someone who's received messages that way as well. So I like the idea of really digging into that target audience and kind of speaking their message. Um, how does this show up on social media? You know, when it comes to finding those people and connecting with them. What are some of the things you've seen work really well for you and your clients? Yeah. So I think it really comes down to thinking about you, even like past clients that you've worked with. I think this is really great. Like about every six months to write out every client that you've worked with and just really anything about that person. And, uh, you know, like, what they needed help with, what you 
like the the wins that you were able to get them, um, unique characteristics about them and their business or whatever it is that they do if you're a B2C provider instead. And start to notice like the ones that really got like the best results or were the easiest to work with or like wanted to re-up with you or any of those things. Like what are those common things and what was different about the the other ones that maybe got good results, but it wasn't uh, you know, they weren't quite as like outstanding, or maybe there was a bit more friction in working together, or anything like that. Because the more that you can keep refining, like a lot of times it's things that are less obvious on the surface. And then you're like, oh, okay, actually, this is like a really unique characteristic that we hadn't intended for initially. But now we are actually finding that like the people who work best with us actually also have this unique thing in place, right? So for instance, I used to have a lot of... um, I had several clients who were scaling passive courses. And so I helped them go from a lot of done for you to a bit more like passive business models and had great success. And then I had a few others where they just could not get out of the weeds of the day to day, right? They hadn't had their team for long enough, or there were other factors at play. And so even though technically, they had seemingly the right things in place to be able to scale, there were actually a few very like small differentials that I was like, Oh, okay, in hindsight, I can see like, the difference between client A and client like who got phenomenal results and client B who got good results, but couldn't fully get their business scaled in our time together. Like what, what were those things? And then it's like, okay, if I want to keep having this be an offer that I have in my business, I need to really hone in on my marketing. Like I need to very clearly speak more to the people who uh, have those other facets in place that really set them up for that, like, ultimate success or that that quantum leap, right? And I'm sure you probably have things like this in your like with your clients too, right? Like they have to have some level of structure already in place for you to be able to do your best work. And so it's important in like the the um more nuanced languaging that you're using when you're showing up is like that might be things about like mentioning like, oh, you know, when we work with you and your team or, uh, you know, you're like, you're fully booked and you're ready to hand this off, right? So those little indicators are going to us to speak to a different potential clientele than maybe like an entrepreneur who is just starting and isn't ready to fully outsource their social media management. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's all in how you say it as well. Um, because some people, you know, we used to say we work with small businesses, for instance, which is very broad. Mm-hmm. Um, and in recent years, we've narrowed it down to online businesses because the strategies that we teach, while mm-hmm. they can be applicable to a local business, um, uh, there's a different strategy, a different nuance to that. So we definitely mm-hmm. speak more to that digital entrepreneur. Cause I definitely hear what you're saying. Um, I'm curious how this shows it for you. So where do you spend your time on social media and how do you find your people? Yeah. So I really primarily just hang out on Instagram. And so when I am on Instagram, I really view it as kind of like a, like a cocktail party or like a backyard barbecue in the summer, something like that. That's just like a casual and fun hangout. So going back to like the client audit and stuff, when you are thinking about like, okay, you know, who, who are some of those people that like, I, it's just been like, if I, if I could clone them and work with them again and again, like I, that would just be the dream. And like, what are some of their other characteristics? And also like, what are my values and who appears to be in line with my values? And usually it's, you know, like when we have friends, oftentimes like we have, like our friends are similar to us. Like that's why they're our friends. Like we have those shared values. We have 
you know, maybe some similar goals, things like that, ways of being in the world. And so usually it's like people who are connected to people that we already like vibe with, I guess, for, for lack of a better term, like it's not always the case, but it's often the case that those people will also be people that we have fun connecting with. So I kind of think like if, you know, if a friend invited you to their, to their party, to their barbecue, and maybe you know some of the people there and you're mingling, then you're like, I want to get to know some other people. You know, you kind of scan around and you're like, who does it look like I would most get along with? You make your best guess, you go on over, you introduce yourself, and then you start chatting. And like, you're not like immediately trying to pitch them or whatever. You're just literally like asking them questions, right? You're getting to know them, you're learning about them. Um, you're just, you know, chit chatting about whatever. And then from there, you can kind of see like, was your hunch right? Are they people who you want to get to know better? Do you want to keep nurturing that relationship or do you not? And then kind of going from there. And I feel like, like truly some of my best friends are people that I've met on Instagram and now they are actual friends. Some I've met in person, some I have yet to meet in person. Um, and not all of them have become clients either. Some are referral partners, some are collaborators, some are just people who are fun to chat with. Um, and yeah, and I, I can like honestly say that I have found phenomenal relationships on Instagram by actually treating it as a, a means to be social and meet new people and not just to close a lot of sales. 100% agree. I found my podcast editor on Instagram, my mastermind group we met on Instagram, and we've been meeting for like four years now. Um, there's so much power in just connecting with people um, and being a human, like just show up like a freaking human. Yeah, <laughs> that's easy. Yes, yes. exactly. Um, so I'm curious, um, do you know about how much time you would spend, you know, any given day or any given week kind of implementing this um, networking backyard barbecue strategy? Yeah, so I would say, uh, you know, right now as of recording this, it's January. I'm always like low energy in January. So I definitely have not been on as much, but it's you. I would say I'm usually on for about like 30 minutes to an hour a day it just depends like uh like connecting with new people and then connecting with current people and you know maybe posting and responding to comments things like that and it's it's usually throughout the day right it's like little pockets of time i'm not it's not like a set chunk of time on my calendar where i'm like Okay, and now for an hour, I'm just going to be on Instagram. It's it's usually little bits here and there throughout the day where you know I'll check in, I'll respond to DMs, I'll maybe look like watch a few stories, like things like that. I try to keep it really low, low stress for myself. Yeah, I love that. And I think, you know, for those of you who are listening, you get to design and choose how you want to show up. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is such a great example of making it work with your workflow with your day. I, cause I'm the opposite. I need like a chunk of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to like block it off or else it's never going to happen. Um, so for me, I prefer to have that block and then I just forget about it the rest of the time. Uh, but you can choose how you want to do that checking in a few times a day. That works beautifully for a lot of people as well. Uh, you mentioned posting. I'm curious about your approach to creating content for Instagram. Do you follow a plan or strategy? Do you follow your intuition, a combination? Let us know. Yeah. So I used to, um, up until a couple of years ago, I would usually plan kind of like two weeks ish at a time. Um, and I was, you know, I would be scheduling posts to go up and like the whole shebang. Uh, and then at the end of 2019, we moved from New York to Michigan. And I was just like, I don't, I don't have it in me, right? Like it's something, something has to go off my plate while I like 
reacclimate to a whole new area and do all of that stuff. And so in that, I really, well, and then of course, like pandemic, right? So three months, three months later, and then, yeah. So I really didn't have the, the brain space to like think ahead a lot in terms of what I wanted to post. So what I started doing, and this is something that I actually do with, um, in my group program and how I, approach a different way of thinking about content with them is and not that they again not that they have to follow it like whatever i'm always okay with whatever works for you works for you and that's fantastic um but is it's looking at like what is your truth what is it that makes you unique what is it that you feel really strongly about in your industry what is the uh like approach that you take that might be different than some other people in your field. And then what are you driving people to right now? Is it something free? Is it something paid? Like what is, what is the end goal? And then just really thinking about that, like I I feel like it helps a lot of people to be more flexible and more on the fly. So when they're like, okay, I, I feel like, you know, I, I want to say something, I should say something, but I just, I don't really have the time to like sit down and make a whole beautiful carousel on Canva before I push this out there. Like, I don't want to spend an hour fussing over that. It's like, okay, what is the, what is the least thing that I can do right now that is still going to do something to move the needle forward on my business? And how can I, how can I really make my limited time on social work for me instead of just having to be this other like stressful to do? Yes. Yes. And I love that, you know, you, you're, you're going through the seasons of it as well, which I think a lot of people don't think about with business. Um, this happens to me in July and in December almost every year. July, I'm done. I don't have any mm-hmm. energy. I spend a, like a big push in the first half of the year. And it feels like half the world is like on vacation anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then same thing with December. It's, it's the holidays. You know, things are winding down. I have a bunch of like year end stuff to do for the business. Mm-hmm. I typically just don't have a lot of energy and just recognizing that pattern in yourself and allowing yourself the freedom to go, you know what? I'm just going to take a break. We're just going to mm-hmm. do what we can for now. I think that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I really have to, I'm, I'm like all about flexibility. I have to have it. (laughs) Yeah. Flexible and being kind to yourself as a human being, which Mm -hmm. I love. Um, I'm, I'm curious about some of your other social media boundaries. You know, one of the things that online business owners have been talking a lot about recently is the social media overwhelm, the overstimulus, the notifications, the feeling of like you have to be on all the time. How, what are some of the things you do to manage your, your boundaries around social media? Yeah. So I feel like often on the weekends, not always, um, but I would say most weekends I'm not on social media very much. I might like share a thing or two into my stories from somebody else or, you know, post a picture and put it in there. Or if I'm, if I'm feeling like inspired, I might make just like a reel of, I don't know, going out to the farmer's market and, and, you know, beautiful pictures of like the flowers and the vegetables or something like that. But it's, it's more of just like, I'm having fun and and being creative rather than really trying to sell or or market too much. Um, and I also feel like I don't um like the same thing goes if I'm on vacation as well, right? I just will, you know, sometimes I'll check in and because again, I have a lot of friends on there. So my DMs, a lot of times it's like the same as if I was just texting with friends or Facebook messaging with friends, right? It's It doesn't actually feel like work. So I may check in for those things, but I don't... I take the pressure off myself to feel like if I'm not here, it's impossible that I'll ever get more clients, right? Like it's... I don't want to come at it from this like scarcity point of view. It's like, no, it's just... 
for a short window of time, you know, maybe a week, maybe two weeks, like my business is not going to collapse uh, in, in that amount of time from not being on social media. Um, and also, I even just on regular weekdays, work days, I don't necessarily give myself a ton of pressure. Like if I if I'm just tired, if it's been a really full day and I don't have it in me to respond to DMs at night while I'm sitting on the couch. Like I just, I just don't do it. It's like, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. It's, it's fine. Um, cause it's, you know, there's no like emergency. If it's a client, they know other ways to get a hold of me. Right. So it's, it's totally fine. And I just take the pressure off of myself that way. Um, cause I also know that for me, uh, I want it to, I want it to work for me long term. And so again, if it starts to feel like this huge burden, like this chore, then I'm not, go- I'm going to be resentful and I'm like never going to want to show up there, which I don't want because again, I meet amazing people there. So I actually do want to feel happy using the platform for many, many years. Yes. For those of you who are listening, I'm doing like giant head nods because <laughs> I'm, le- I agree 100%. When you feel the burden of like, you have to do this thing, then it makes it so challenging. Um, I'll use an analogy here for this. When I, or an example, I don't know if this is an analogy per se, but when I first started business, I hated doing my books, like matching receipts and doing all that stuff because I would do it once a month and it was like an hour, hours of work. And I was like, I cannot handle this. And it, I like dragged my feet, then things would pile up. It was not pretty. In 2020, um, actually it was this 2021. Uh, a year and a half ago, I guess, by the time this comes out, um, I started doing it weekly, totally changed how I felt about it because it went from hours of work to, and I switched to QuickBooks, uh, hours of work to like 10, 15 minutes a week where I was like, boom, boom, boom. And sometimes I go in multiple times a week because it literally just takes a minute and I don't mm-hmm. feel so like drained by it. And I think that's the key to like figuring out some of these things for yourself on social media is, you know, how can you approach this task in a way that makes you want to still do it every day as a business owner, or at least like what's the, what's the bare minimum that you have to do. And then you can probably like outsource some of this as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, thinking about how you can show up, because if you're going to dedicate yourself to social media, it is a daily or regular habit at the very least. Um, And it's not something where you can just check in, you know, once every three months. It doesn't really quite work work that way. So, yeah, I loved I love that you you approach it in that way of, um, you know, the feelings behind it. And then I love that you said, you know, DM. Just leave them for the next day. I've almost never had an emergency. I can't even think of a time where it was like, I have to reach you through mm-hmm. an Instagram DM. It's an emergency. Like there are other <laughs> ways to reach me um, if it truly is an emergency. And so it's okay to leave it a day. Like it's fine. It'll be okay. I love that. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think too, the... I I feel like in a lot of ways, it's funny when I went fully online, I used to really think like, oh, I'm so behind because I've had like in-person, like regular, more traditional businesses before. But now I actually see it as the opposite. I actually view it like what I was viewing as a weakness back in 2017. I'm like, oh no, this is actually a strength because I have done it the old fashioned way where you where marketing is a lot harder to reach multiple people at once so i think a really good like mindset shift is that like you know it's we all have to market like i always use example like oprah still markets everyone knows who oprah is she still has to market her her company and like so we we still have to do it so how can we make it easier on ourselves and how can we like leverage our time better And social media, as you know, is an amazing tool to do that because where before you had to go to like an in-person networking event in your town and hope that there, that your ideal clients were there and like stand around and chit chat and mingle for two hours. Now you can do one post and reach 
thousands of potential ideal clients. And it just, it, it is so much more sustainable to me when I think about it that way. It's like, could I spend 30 minutes on here and like mingle and, and reach a bunch of cool people and make really great money? Or can I go out in the cold and have to like stand around in a, I don't know, the back room of like a coffee shop and, and chit chat with people who honestly are probably not the right fit for my business. Yeah, absolutely. It's the magic of having like way more reach than you could ever possibly dream of, which is beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful thing. Um, okay. So as we wrap up, I know that you have an amazing downloadable resource for our audience. Tell us about your no sleeves selling guide. Yeah. So when I realized that I was really good at sales and really good at teaching sales in a way that resonated with a lot of people, I turned it into my no sleaze sales method. So it's an acronym. It's very simple. It's just the word sales and you can get it in the download and it walks you through all of it. But essentially, so going back to what I was talking about before with like auditing your current and past clients and really continually like refining who is the best fit for you and then marketing to them. So in the word sales, in the acronym, A stands for ask and L stands for listen, among other like listen, limit and lead. So these two are really crucial and you can do this on social media as well. So as you're realizing who is the best fit Not just for working with you, because you might have a few different products or offers that you have that work better for different people, maybe at different points of their customer journey. So what you can actually do is when you're having these conversations and you're getting to know people very organically, is the more really good questions that you ask people to like to get to know about them, to get to know what they do or what they're interested in it can actually help you see if that person is A, even a good fit to be a client, B, if they are a good fit, which offer are they best for? Or if they're not a good fit to work with you, could they be somebody that you collaborate together in some way where you have a mutually beneficial way that you can help promote each other's businesses? You could do some fun collab. You could be referral partners. like. The sky is basically the limit. But really, I think where selling goes wrong is it's too much of just like talking at people and trying to convince them why they should have your thing. And if we just switch it to asking good questions and really getting to learn about people and listening really well and then leading them to what is the best solution for them in this moment, that creates such a beautiful experience on both sides, right? So you, it's like, it's a win-win going both ways. So I walk you through that in the guide and it's at bit.ly forward slash no sleaze selling. So all lowercase, all one word, you can get it. It's, you can go through the whole thing in like under 10 minutes. And rather than having to think of selling and like sales calls as this rigid script to be followed, It actually relies on how humans naturally converse um, just in regular relationship building. And so it really harnesses the power of of the real human conversation in order to assess if, you know, if that person should or shouldn't work with you and uh, which way would be best for them to work with you. Beautiful. And I'm going to put that link in the show notes as well, y'all. OnlineDre.com slash 211. Click it, grab it, dive on in. It sounds like an amazing resource. And then for those people who want to connect connect with you online, Instagram sounds like it's where it's at. Yeah. So Erica Tebbins Consulting is me over there. Definitely say hi and slide into my DMs because I, I love chatting with people. I, I genuinely love meeting new people. Um, and then, yeah, and on my podcast, Sell It Sister, I have 
way more tips on sales and marketing. And so I have over 100 episodes. So if you're if you're looking for something and if you're if you're stuck, scroll through there. If you're not sure, DM me and I'll point you in the right direction of an episode or two. Wonderful. And I'll put all the links to Instagram, the podcast, Erica's website in the show notes. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This was great. Thank you for having me. And thank you, dear listener, for listening to this episode of the Savvy Social Podcast. If you love it, head on over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Give us a five-star review. It helps keep us in the top 100 marketing charts. We are charting now in the US, Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, everywhere, all over the world, because you guys enjoy the podcast and leave us some gorgeous reviews. And uh, we appreciate you so much. Next week, I'm interviewing Tanla Geisler. Y'all are going to learn a lot about this idea of imposter syndrome, especially if you're feeling a little bit like you don't know what you're talking about in your business, but you know you want to show up on social media. She's going to help break through that imposter complex in next week's episode that's coming out on Tuesday. And we have new episodes every Tuesday. So I'll see you next week. In the meantime, I'll be hanging out on social media. Bye for now.